Good morning guys, welcome to another response video. Um, I'm trying, my microphone's down here instead of up at my face, so I'm trying a different way of maybe recording to see if this will work. Uh, <laughs> so if the sound's bad, I'm sorry. I am eventually, I am getting one of those arms that attaches to my desk and so I can be right there all the time when I can just work from there. But until that comes in, I'm trying different things. So this is another response video for somebody else, for a Christian who's all about, you know, Black Lives Matter. Um, again, I wanted to say, because this is the second one, I just wanted to reiterate, this is not specifically against this person, okay? This person has just, is just very emotional, has a heart for people, wants everybody to be safe, to be happy, to live God's way, etc. However, their emotions make them take it out to like these these areas that don't make sense, okay? And you'll see what I mean as I talk about it. So here's the first one. She says, I haven't posted about this every day because I think the most effective way to reach a larger number of people is slowly and gently. Some disagree with this approach and go straight for the throat over and over again, and that's valid too. It's that important for sure. So I just wanted to stop there and say this person who's talking about this is totally okay with somebody getting in somebody else's face, um, totally okay with the actions of people who are out there. I don't know if you've seen it, but there are people who are stopping other people from eating at restaurants, making them do the black power fist and everything. And she's okay with that because to her, this is uh, one of the most important things we should be talking about. So that's fine, and that's violence, though, okay? But that's perfectly acceptable. I just want you guys to let this sink in, okay? This is what emotion, like, over-emotion does, where it's just fine. This is so important. We can just be violent. We can make people who haven't done anything wrong uh, feel uh, like they have. We can be violent towards them. We can do all this stuff. So because of what your skin looks like, she's okay with violent things happening to you. And that's the hypocrisy of this liberal emotional mindset. All right. And this is what I can't stand. Okay. So she goes on, but they're them. And I mean, I'm not trying to force y'all to agree with me or leave, but I'm heartbroken again today that so many don't know or want to know what's going on. The atrocities that people of the black community have endured go back centuries, yes, but they didn't somehow stay there or get solved by a proclamation. The systems put in place then are still very much in practice today. You can see it for yourself if you look, listen, or watch. So she has no example of the system that were put in place that she's talking about. Um, and so far, the first, the beginning, she's like, uh, there are systems put in place with no example. And then there are, <clears throat> then it's okay to be violent towards people because of their color, their race. So this person, because of how emotional she is, and because she's taken this, um, well, I care about everybody stance, but then taken this extreme stance is now against other people. Like some, you know, this whole racism thing isn't even, uh, it's just a percentage of people again. It's like these small percentages of people are running everything now because us, the larger percentage of people who look at somebody and go, oh, that's just Steve, regardless of what Steve looks like, etc. Those people are not speaking out. So this is again, what I'm trying to do with these videos. Be like, look, no, it's not okay to be violent towards me, someone who is not racist and etc just because there might be somebody who is racist who did something that's not okay but that liberal mindset that emotional mindset says it is because it's so important it doesn't matter just go hurt people so you can get the get the information out there it's like but actually talking about what the information is giving me examples that actually show hey look this person did this just because of the color of someone's skin that actually works a whole lot better I mean, I think part of the problem is that they can't actually find any, so now they're just trying to make it out to be something else. All right, so let's move on. Let me see here. 
There are boys who are little and adorable and precious now that will grow up being seen as threats and criminals, whether they have done anything you and you or I wouldn't do or not. Okay. Yeah, newsflash, that's everybody. Especially if you're male. Especially. Uh, I've already told the story of my brother getting picked up by the cops for something he didn't do. And he's not the only story where the justice system was not just. Do I like that? No. But it's not unique to people with darker skin color. It is unique to people who are male, especially if you're so tall. Um, you know, maybe you're not inclined to smile as much as other people. Uh, that will get you uh, looked at. If you like going off on your own, that'll get you looked at. And if you look at a lot of these cases, these people were by themselves. They weren't indicating, you know, that, that you're not a threat. And this happens to a lot of people. I've known so many guys who have gone off by themselves camping and then the ranger or the cop or whoever that sees them shows up as like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? And it's not, it's a marked place where you can camp. So, and they paid to camp. It's like, I'm camping. Why are you camping here? It's like, well, this is where I paid to camp. So <laughs> it's not just that, you know, it's not a race thing. It is a, do you look like a threat thing? And if you wander around looking so, like something or someone that, that looks like a threat, you're going to get talked to. Now, do I think that's right? No, because you know, they're just like me. I don't smile all that much. I try to actively make sure I am smiling at people just because my natural face is not one of a smile. You know, my brothers and sisters, my family, that's not our natural face. We could be completely happy and our face would look like this. And that's not what people, people don't understand that, that you can still be happy and look like that. So we have to take like that extra step and just show people, hey, I am happy. This is fine. You know, whatever. It's unfortunate, but you know, we're, not, we're outside of the norm. So that's what's going on. And I would still say that this, what happens here where you grow up and you're seen as threats or criminals, whether you've done anything or not, is still everybody because that's the way the cops are trained. They're not trained, oh, just trust them. They're telling you the truth. They're trained, this person's probably lying. So it is literally everybody from that even point of view. She goes on to say, I would fight and die for these babies, just like they were mine. Sorry, my dog's in here and she's wanting attention. <laughs> It's not about politics or whether or not you or I agree with everything everyone from a certain social justice group said or did. For the record, I don't. But that's not the point. That's not as important as what these people are going through. Black lives matter, even if you saw a stat saying this or that about this situation or that one. So nobody is saying that black lives don't matter. What anyone that I've ever listened to, watched, whatever is saying is that you cannot put people on a pedestal because what's going to happen is everybody under that pedestal is going to get forgotten and then we'll have injustice again like everybody's worried about justice but one this side for example this liberal sort of emotional side is saying well in order to get justice we have to amplify and amplify okay but you're amplifying just people you're not amplifying like how these problems get started and the, the, the sad part about it is these problems get started because people don't take the extra steps. Like I said before, if you're not one of those people who smiles a lot, you're not, you know, you're not taking extra steps to say, Hey, you know what? Smile, put your hands out in a, you know, positive gesture or up even, um, when I deal with cops, my hands are out in front of me on my, on my legs so that they can see where my hands are. Uh, what I was taught about cops is that you put your hands on the steering wheel on the top. Unless he's asked you for something, that's where they stay. And if you want to move, you ask first. That was my cop, you know, what my parents were teaching me about how to deal with cops. That's what they taught me. Because I don't have a gun. They do. You want to make sure they are as comfortable as possible. And so that they understand that you are not a threat because they will shoot you because that is what they're trained to do. This is, this is why I'm mostly on the side of police retraining, like how to do this so that they're safe and we're safe when we're not doing anything. So, so for me, this argument just doesn't fly. 
saying black lives matter is just like saying Mexican lives matter, white people lives matter. Yeah, sure. People's lives matter. However, you do have to take some responsibility with your life. You can't just say, well, my life matters, so you have to do everything. No, you do. Like there are certain, you have, there's a threshold of personal responsibility that you have to reach before I say, well, okay, now let's look at the other person. Because if you're not doing everything you're supposed to do, then guess what? You attributed to what you did. And I just, that personal responsibility message, people who are just upset that other people are upset don't want to hear that because it's like, well, they're still hurting. Like, yes, they are. Uh, when I do something stupid, I hurt too, but that doesn't mean I didn't contribute to it. <laughs> uh, for example, my purse was stolen this last month. Um... But, you know, it's because I left it in the car like you're not supposed to. I attributed to it. Did I still call the cops and say, hey, somebody stole my purse? Yeah, because somebody still did wrong. But am I angry? No. And was I sad? Yes, because I did something dumb. And so I got my stupid tax. Like, I don't understand. Y you have a certain threshold of personal responsibility before it starts really becoming somebody else's full responsibility. Like, they're responsible for what they did, stealing the purse. I'm responsible for what I did, leaving it in there to give them the ability to do that. Like, come on, I'm at least at fault somewhat. So that's just, you, you have some responsibility for your actions and that goes for everybody. And this, in this situation, what she's talking about, the cop and the person, they both have responsibility for what they did. So she continues, goodness gracious, y'all. I know it's easier to nitpick out of the things you disagree with. But if we actually tried to see things from another point of view for a change, and my question always is, what point of view are we supposed to be looking at this from? I grew up dirt poor with nothing. We couldn't get help from anyone. And any time we got ahead, it was taken from us by the government or, you know, just because my dad made bad decisions. Again, responsibility, right? What view do you want me to have? You know, that life is hard? Yes, it's hard, especially for everyone, especially if you think you're owed something. Like, sheesh, guys, come on. Life is hard for the rich, it's hard for the poor. It's hard different ways, but it's still hard. Like there's nothing, there's nothing about life that says it's gonna be easy breezy. There's nothing about life that says where you're gonna go through, everybody's gonna make good decisions and um, every, there's not gonna be any heartache. So this thing, like I, when things like this happen, where a cop shoots somebody or somebody shoots the cop, I have, you know, I'm sad for the families involved. I'm sad that this person's dead or this person got beat up or whatever. But like I said, personal responsibility is part of this. And this emotional side, this liberal side says, no, it doesn't matter. This person has power, so they have all the responsibility. Like, well, if I go driving around in an area where, you know, is known for drug uh, use, and this is where people mostly do their drug trade, and I'm driving around in there and I get stopped by the cops and ask, you know, do you have any drugs in the car? I'm not going to get mad about that. I'm in an area where that's where this happens. Excuse me. I just think that that part is overlooked. And most of the time when uh, conservatives and liberals are talking, the liberals don't like the personal responsibility side and the conservatives are like, they have personal responsibility. Maybe we can talk about cop rehabilitation or something. And they just don't want to talk about it, as you see here. <clears throat> so she goes on to say, what if we realize that we as a country have been really good at dodging the truth on this for a long time, that there's always some reason to turn away from all of it and focus on something else because we care more about finding the reason that finding that reason that we do about actually solving the problem. Okay. Uh, finding the reason things happen is how you solve a problem. So again, just emotion would they, and I understand it because I'm frustrated too. What is the answer? What are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? Um, so like I said, 50, 50, right? People have to start acting, you know, differently towards cops, maybe follow my dad's advice. I don't know. And then cops need to be trained differently also. Okay. I say that I would say that there is a lack in most of these cases of them just understanding or wanting to say, hey, this is a person, you know, whether or not you're 
a career criminal shouldn't matter as far as your rights as a person. So maybe some of that. I don't know what the answer is, and that's the problem, is I hate making videos like this because, again, I don't have answers either. Um, <clears throat> I've looked at other police models, and I just don't think it would work here because of the the level of independence that we have from each other. A lot of other places, they have sort of like this understanding of dependence on each other, so then it makes it easier for them to... It's like a, a, a cultural thing in their whole nation. So it makes it easier to, you know, correct someone. But it's not that easy here. So again, though, in this section, no answers. You're just bad. And that's just, I, I, refu I refuse to listen to that. I'm not a bad person. And this uh, vitriol or this whole thing where, um, well, you're just bad because somebody else did something wrong. Mm -mm, that's not going to fly. Again, I don't have responsibility for the situation that happened there. Wasn't there. Didn't do anything. So I won't listen to that. Uh, she says, I'm so sick of being people argue about whether or not black lives matter. Just stop. Just care that someone else is hurting. If you're bleeding out, you don't want someone to come yell at you that it's not that bad. Stop whining or worse, ignore it because you look like someone else they know that always whines. This is really happening. I don't doubt that it's happening, but I doubt that it's every single case that you see. Um, when I got hurt, that is what my dad told me. Walk it off. <laughs> okay. That is a... I guess a military mindset, uh, you don't have time to fix it in the military a lot of times, so it's just walk it off. Just patch it up as best you can and walk it off. Um, I don't think her analogy is correct. If you're bleeding out, most of the time people are not bleeding out. Most of the time they're getting attitudes, they're trying to run away, they are engaging in a, an act that is illegal. So they, they personally started this... Um, this domino effect. It's not like these are perfectly innocent people. Um, okay, no, let me start. A low percentage, very low, like maybe 2% of these cases are perfectly innocent people who've done nothing, do nothing, have never done anything, and the cops shoot them because then they're in the wrong place, wrong time. That's like maybe 2%. What you're mostly seeing on here is the people who are engaged in illegal activity dangerous activity that's putting other people who, who are innocent in danger and they are getting the fruits of their choices okay and that's very sad to me that, that, that they would make those choices but it's also I'm not going to say that because of that we should you know just completely let these people go no Okay, they made choices in their life. They're hanging out with people they're not supposed to. They're doing these things. So, you know, I'm not going to stand with a group called Black Lives Matter because their ideology is one of killing white people and getting rid of the nuclear family as well. I mean, that's at least two things Christians can't stand by. You know, God created the nuclear family. He created it a certain way, and that's the way it needs to be. And... You know, when this happens, is it now okay for white people to die for being white? Because that's also what Black Lives Matter stands for. But, you know, that's racist as well. They don't want to, you know, people like this don't want to hear that. So one example she does give is the mer sorry maternity mortality rates. She says, that's just for starters, doesn't keep looking. So I did do some research. Maternity mortality rates are up because overwhelmingly people are using government health care wherever you're wherever the poor are they're using government health care and, and again this does not matter to someone's skin color if you look at the poor in the poor Appalachians they have the exact same problems that the poor in the uh, city do and they're not black it's, it is it has nothing to do with the color of your skin but again this person can't see that because all they're being all they're being fed is the Black Lives Matter thing. That's what the media is screaming. That's what everybody is screaming. So because of that, that's all you see. And then that's the only reaction that we get. Well, guess what? Any poor people are going through this. Okay, they have these bad maternity mortality rates because of the poor government health care. And I'm not saying that's right. It just is. And the government health care is notorious for being bad. Again, for everybody vets 
have government health care. They, they die at a higher rate for things that they shouldn't die for. They have terrible care. They almost die. Like the VA will do as little as possible to get you care as cheaply as they can. Again, government health care. And this is what causes people to die. So again, it's not, it's not your color. It's not your sex. It's not even your creed. The one underlying factor here is government health care because the government doesn't care about you. And these outlets that are pushing the Black Lives Matter, they don't care about you either, you know? So this, this, because it's been in the news, that's why people are talking about it. So to be clear though, and to, in closing, I do feel bad for people when they lose someone they love or when their loved one makes a bad decision. It puts them in danger or in a hard place when they didn't need to be like life even though it's hard, can be a lot easier if you're smart about things. That doesn't mean I'm ready to throw in the towel with people who want to destroy everything because they're having an emotional moment or just destroying things that I hold dear and hold higher than even those I love. Okay, and that's, you know, uh, that the nuclear family, you know, the way God set things up is there for a reason because it works and it works every single time. And that's something I love more than even my family. I love God and the way he wants things because that is the best. That is the smartest way to do it. And there's no other way for me, as far as I'm concerned, that I can see things going as well as it does. So that's very different when people, I'm not going to side with people who want to destroy everything. And that's all I have to say, guys. I think this, the reason I picked these two from her is because to me, you can really have the deeper conversation here as a response. Um, trying to talk to a liberal, emotional person about this is very difficult. They really don't want to have a conversation. They just want things fixed. And that's hard to do. You can't just fix it, you know. So you have to have multiple ones. You have to put aside your emotions. You have to think about it. You have to, you know, collect data so you can figure out what to do. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to join the conversation, I'd love to hear what you say down in the comments. Uh, remember to subscribe for more of these conversations and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.